Hello Bookish Brit, my name is Andrew and today we are doing a tag. Now I had a lot of discrete ideas of what I wanted to do for this video but I decided in the end, about 20 minutes ago, to do a tag video and this tag is new, quite new, I think it was upgraded like two hours ago and that is the Great British Bake Off Tag. I'm, as you guys are probably aware if you follow me on Twitter, I am slightly, slightly obsessed with that show. And yes, books and cake. Need I say more? The tag was created by Jack, Reading with Jack, and yes, I love Bake Off. I have books, I have computers on MacBook. Look, that's meant to be up, by the way. So, for those of you wondering, I have a slight thing for Disney, Pixar films. Although I haven't seen it Inside Out. Is that good? Should I pre order it on DVD? That's getting away from the cake, whole production of cakes and biscuits. And I'm sorry, I just had a daydream about cakes. So let's get started. I have questions. So let's get started. Question one is week one. Sorry. Week one is cake. The cake has sunk in the middle. Pick the book that does not exceed your expectations. The amount of times I've read that question in the last 20 minutes. I have to lean because my books are all over here. I'm sorry. And the book in question is, is Mockingjay by Zand Collins. I, I don't know what it is. I it's trying to do something different, which is trying to show the real conflict of war, which is very behind the scenes, which is fine. I totally accept it. There are certain things in this book I do not think were. The epilogue. I could do a video, and I think I will do a video about this, about the epilogue. Why I loathe the epilogue. And certain things happen in characters, like what happened to the end of Gale, I did not like. I don't like the epilogue. I don't like how certain characters were dismissed very, very quickly. It was just, yeah, I think. So, question one is mock and shame. Sorry. Question two, week two, I need to say week, not question. Week two is biscuits. One, week, <laughs> it's such a long question, so bear with why I read. Once you've eaten one, you're hungry for more, and each time you eat another, it gets more and more delicious. That just sums up biscuits. In a nutshell, I adore biscuits. Um, pick a book series or trilogy that has got proceedingly better. That is going to be The Half Bad Trilogy by Sally Green. I have book three is not out until next year, so I'm halfway through the series. So that could change next year if I do this again. But I started, I read this just before Half Wild came out, and I became obsessed with this series so much so that I fell into a reading slump. I just loved how the writing, it felt like the writing got better, and the writing was, doing, was quite unique and took risks, and the story in itself, and I mean, if you read Half Wild, the second book in the series, you know how insane that book gets. <laughs> but, yeah. Biscuits I will have as the half bad biscuit, please, and thank you. Ah. Question three. Oh, my God. Is bread. Bread. I love bread. Needing dough requires hard work and determination. Pick a book you have that you've put off reading for ages and needed a lot of determination to pick up. I'm going to change that slightly. I'm sorry. And I'm going to change that, but there are four books. And they're books I still haven't read. Because the, they, it's, the size is scary, and the anticipation to them is scary. So, let me... So, the books are To Bread, The Bone Season, and the sequel of Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. Just, there's a lot of hype around this, and I'm very, very scared, and I just... <laughs> Game of Thrones. Just, it's a beast. Look how thick it is. Look how thick it is. And I bet you anything, I'm not going to like it. Because I've not read the TV show. I've not, I've not watched the TV show. I've not read anything of this. So I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. Outlander by Diane Thingy Me Ball. It begins with G. I know that. I know it's in the TV so I'm fascinated to read it because it's historical and it's something I'm not very aware of. But the big mama is this one. I'm very very scared to read this one because everyone on the internet loves this book and I I don't know every time I pick it up to read it I have this real mm, and I feel that it needs a lot of intense pressure to push me into it I do want to read Carry On though which is fan fiction which is written in this book so I don't understand why I want to read that one but not read this one so yeah I have four books for that I just, I'm trying to give it a nice mix of books, just because I know there are some people out there that go, why are you picking that book? You should be this book. And no, 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 no. Not 
everyone has their own opinion on books, so I'm not going to be, but these are my choices. I bet Michelle's going to watch this video and just, and everyone else on the bookish book video, I've got what she's doing, look at me like I'm going insane. So, but yeah, those are my breads. Question four is, week four is dessert, which is a foreign dessert uh, such as creme brulee and another one I cannot dare pronounce, is are on the menu. Pick a book set in a foreign country. You just said foreign country. You didn't say anything else, like in space. Because if it wasn't space, it would be these broken stars. But the one I'm going to pick for foreign country is... I'm trying to pick ones that are not like English speaking, so not America, not Canada, not Australia, is... Daughter of Smoke and Burn by Lani Taylor. This is the UK hardback edition and this is the American. I Someone actually gave this to me a few weeks ago. And it's gorgeous, but why is she wearing a mask? Why? I mean, it's set in Prague. Yeah, it's set in Prague. I'm positive it's set in Prague. But it does go more global and other worlds later on. But I do, I just, I remember reading this and thinking Prague was such a wonderful place to go. I still really like to go on to go see Prague, but yeah. Daughter of Smoke and Bones. Please and thank you for, for desserts. Week Five is alternative ingredients. Not normally used, but surprisingly good. Pick a book from a genre you wouldn't normally read, but ended up loving. There's only There was only one book I wrote immediately when I thought that question, and that is, and this is my art up copy, so I do put, is one by Sarah Crossan. Corson? This is not the, that is the cover, by the way. It is YA, so it was something I was wearing but it's written in free verse poetry. I don't like poetry. I found poetry very hard work to read, but this, I just, I whizzed through. I adore it. I thought it was so smart, it was so clever, it was like conjoined twins. And I just found it so interesting and so clever how she wrote it in this way, and yet it just worked for the book. So, yeah, this one, the one, or just one, no the. Week six is pastry. Short crust pastry can be can crumble easily. Pick a character you would who you initially liked, but as you read more and more, your relation with them crumbled apart. Oh, so many characters, so many. The one I the one go there for is actually two characters, which is Bella and Edward from the Twilight Saga. I know I should pick like a character from Harry Potter or Divergent. I know I should, but I found that. First of all, in the first book, when you read it, it's quite romantic. Bella makes sense. That's the book too. This, I found them so. It becomes really a whiny. I almost said a very rude word. There. It becomes very whiny, very stalky, very creepy, very possessive. And I find that uh, if you think that is an ideal of a man in your relationship, then there's something quite wrong with that viewpoint. Because if he loves you, if this person loves you, he shouldn't feel like he has to possess you. He's not in control. And with Bella, there are certain things that reads like that. In the third book, which is everyone's favourite, not mine, really, there was one or two points in the book I thought she was very manipulative. She was very playing the two guys off against each other. And there is a very old video by former bookish wit, uh, Carly, who said, if you're in a love triangle, and you like this guy, but you like that guy too, you get out of it. Bella doesn't get out of it, and I find that so frustrating too. And then, oh, so many issues, but yeah. This one, Bella, Bella and Edward, I'm sorry, I have, I want to reread the series, but I had issues with them. Quest week seven is Victorian or old fashioned base. Recipes from the past that are still taste delicious today. Pick your favorite classic novel. I don't like classic novels. I find, I find the stigma and anything a book when I did called classic, I run for the hill screaming. I do not like it. I read classics in school, and the only two I can think of is Animal Farm by George Orwell and An Inspector Calls by PJ B. Priestley. Those are the only two I can think of. But don't hold your breath. I always have a very but yeah, classic not with me. Sorry, oh, this is, video's going in 10 minutes. This is what happened when you can't, don't know how to edit. Quest week eight is patisserie. Patisserie? Patisserie? Patisserie, yeah, I said it right. You have eaten in the clock and care and there is barely any filling here. 
pick up that lad's substance and fell flat. Oh, oh, which one did I pick? Ah, that's it. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I no, absolutely. I found it a real struggle to read that one. I felt that the characters were. It didn't work. I know it was a start-up book, but it didn't work. I found it very hard to get into that world. I do have the sequel, which is Crown of Midnight, and I do intend to try and read it next year. But that one I found a really, really problematic, and I'm sorry if that's the case, if you disagree. If you love Throne of Glass, great for you, but I just, I need to warm up to it, and I am going to try again next year sometime. So question nine, week nine is chocolate. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Chocolate is a comfort food for many people. Pick a book that you could read again and again and again and still find it comforting. I think we all know what I'm going to say here. The Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I am doing a whole reread of the entire series and I love it. And this would be normally be the book I would go to. One, three, although because of my reread I actually think four would be Cobb of Fire. So Philosopher's Stone, Prison of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire would be my comfort food. But I've noticed in the last few years since I've been blogging and working with the bookish Brits that usually when I'm in a bit of a reading slum or go back to slum, I usually pick up Sabriel by Gareth Nix as well, and that becomes my comfort read. So it's always between, it's between Potter and Sabriel. So rolling a Nix. Battle to the death! <laughs> So nearly there, nearly there. And question 10, week 10, it is the grand finale. We're practically there. We're in the home straight. Everyone is out to impress any an extravaganza showstopper. I think I read that question right. Pick your favourite book of the year so far that really impressed you. I've had quite a lot. Like, the Half Bad trilogy I read this year, I the one, one by Sarah, which I've mentioned earlier on. But the two I'm going to pick up are to, like, bring up. I've got two, just because I think I should show different books. The first one is The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. This is an arc. It's an arc because mine's in paperback, not halfback, and it's signed because I got it signed at Yelp. So, yeah, I found it really it exceeded my expectations. I was really surprised how much I adore this book. And it's just so smart. I love it so. And the book, another the book is The Next Together by Lauren James. I wanted to read the book as soon as I heard about it and I just read it and I just adore it. It's so... Oh, I love this book so much. It's so sad, but I want the sequel now. Please and thank you. But yes, yeah, that's it. We're done. And it took me just over 30 minutes to do it. Oh dear, heavens bazaars. I won't tag anyone because I'm going to open it up. So anyone who is a fan of The Great British Bake Off, please do so. I think it'll be very interesting to see your questions and answers and you guys can tell me off by doing a 13 minute episode video and making it down, squish it down to 8. So, have fun, I will see you in fortnight's time, I hope you have a lovely week, and keep reading, so bye guys! Oh, before I go, next weekend I am at the London Weekender uh, event in South Bank Centre in London, I will be doing the talk about blogging with Cassie from The Dark Readers and Lucy from Lucy the Reader on the Sunday and I'm a bit scared. So, um, yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be there, great. I'm not scared. I need a biscuit. <laughs>